Father, we have come. Father, we have come to bow down in worship. Lifting up our hearts, we bow down in praise. Hallelujah. Holy are you, Lord. 
are matchless. There's none like you. There's no one like you, God. Father Jesus, we take a moment to surrender. Our thoughts, our emotions, our bodies, our hearts, everything to you in absolute surrender, God. We are here by your command. For each and every one of us here have come to this house of worship, come to this house to praise you, God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we pray, Father. Lord, release. Release and do what you want to do, God. Lord, you have absolute control. You have absolute control, God. Rest in this church, Lord. Elevate, 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 my God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, every hindrance, every barrier, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you will release, release something new, oh God. Release something new, oh Jesus, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let the atmosphere of worship change in the house of the Lord. Let the environment change right now. Let the atmosphere of worship arise. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. We give you all our praise. Lord, the tongues break out. The prophecies break out. Jesus, you are free, God. Holy Spirit, you are free to do what you want to do in this house. We welcome you, Lord. Those who have come here burdened, you might be afraid of something, it might be the future, it might be your current situation, whatever it is, the Spirit says, be at rest, be at rest. Because he has already seen it. He has already seen your worst worries. He has already seen your past failures. And that doesn't define who you are today. But the grace. The grace that you and I both stand in. The grace of God that is sufficient. The grace of God that is overpowering. The grace of God that transforms us. Jesus is here. Jesus is here. And we give him all the worship, all of what we are today, we give it to him.
lift it up. Sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. of our pain we will praise you in the midst of our issues 
we will praise you when we are in bondage we will praise you when we are sick we will praise you and give you the highest praise lord father we just give your people into your hands right now Exodus 14. God did a huge miracle and opened the Red Sea for the Israelites. The Israelites were happy. They were joyous. They were praising God in Exodus 15. The first 21 verses of Exodus 15, it is joy. It is praising. It's looking back and seeing what the Lord just did. The pharaohs were killed. The, the, the Egyptians were killed. They were all drowned. There was praising and joy and dancing and everything happening because of what the Lord just did. When you come to verse 21 onwards, the Israelites came in the wilderness the wilderness of Shur. There was bitter waters. There was no water to drink, but they found bitter waters. Just seeing a miracle that the Lord did in the past, they come to a situation where they were thirsty. They wanted to drink. But the waters were poisonous. They were bitter. I don't know. Some of you in this situation today, are going through some bitter waters. That is what was coming up in the spirit. But the Lord is saying to look what I have done in the past. The God is saying to thank him for what he did in the past. It might be such a tough situation for you right now. But just look to the past, what he did. There are so many things we can thank him for so many things but we are looking at the bitter waters right now and complaining but the Lord is saying just look at what I have done for you you are here today you're watching online you guys are in the presence of God but then Moses cried out to the Lord and said Lord what do I do the Lord said there is a tree the tree cursed is the man who hung on the tree the tree is a picture of the cross and Jesus Christ any bitter situation that you're going through right now put the tree into your situation put the cross into the situation put Christ into that situation he's a God who loves you so much he's a God who chases after you so much the prodigal son was all down the prodigal son was in so much shame and guilt. The father came after him. It is the reckless love of God. No matter what you're going through, no matter what bitter situation you're going through, put the finished work of Christ in that situation. Jesus, you are my rescue. You're my fortress. You're my strength. Just right now, if you can say it in your heart, Jesus, I put you in my situation. Say it in your heart. Jesus, I put you in my situation. I put the cross in my situation. My healing is on you, Lord. Father, we thank you. No shadow you won't light up. Mountain you won't climb up. wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me no, 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 no. no shadow you won't light up mountain you won't climb up coming after me do you believe that no wall you won't kick down lie you won't tear down coming after me sing it out sing it out there's no shadow no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after 
our Lord and worship. You are so great, Lord Almighty. You are so great. You are so great in the midst of us. You are, the, you are so great in this church. You are so great, Lord. You are so great and great to be praised and adored and worshipped. We thank you. Hallelujah. Is it not the crazy love, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God? Chases me down until I am found, leaving all the 99. Hallelujah. Oh, Rosh Hashanah, that's a never-ending, reckless love, crazy love, mad love of God. That's what we are enjoying in this place. Hallelujah. 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 God has created an atmosphere of worship in this place. So we have every right to be in that atmosphere and worship Him throughout this session, all this meeting today, our worship service today, all the moments, every time we are free to worship Him. Hallelujah. Because we are in the heavenly atmosphere where we can worship Him. We are, there's no restrictions. If you want to jump and dance and shout and sing hallelujah, we can do that. This is the house of the Lord. This is where there's the freedom of God. Where there is freedom, where the Spirit of God, there is freedom. We have, He has liberated us to enjoy that freedom. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for the beautiful worship. Thank you, worship team. God bless you and multiply you. Make you more useful for His kingdom. As we were worshipping, if any of you has got a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm talking, if God has spoken to you a word, a specific word concerning any situation, if God has spoken to you, not a testimony, if God has spoken to you a word, one minute time is there. If anybody has a word from the Lord, you can come and declare in front of the congregation in the presence of God Almighty God. Hallelujah. Rasha Manadi Baba. Hallelujah. No matter whatever situation you go through, your praises has the power to demolish the kingdom of devil and bring. Hallelujah. Take your captivities away and bring liberty and freedom and encouragement and hallelujah. The mighty works of God will manifest when you open your mouth and praise him. In the midst of adversary coming against you, you don't do nothing but you praise God. You kneel down, you praise God. The mighty power of God will destroy the work of darkness and liberate you from the clutches of the enemy and he will declare you as free and free. Jesus, the greatest weapon God has given us is the praise. Praise. It is in our tongue. It is in our mouth. But if you originate in your heart, whatever you originate in your heart, it comes through your mouth and you execute it, you operate it, you Hallelujah. You say that's the time the situations will change. Hallelujah. Thank you, sister, for that word God has given us. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So as God has helped us to worship, we are going to pray for our pastor now. So I request everybody join the hand. Sometimes we say, I many times I requested you all, please come forward and up and occupy the seat. Many times I said, but I don't know how much people are taking it. Because when we are one body, if see right now, there's a church, see, the church in unity, there is no space in between. A church in unity has a neighbor right next to him. Hallelujah. So all these things we are saying, not for the sake of me or somebody, God has some principles to do in his church. God wants his church to be united in one accord as one body from the head Jesus Christ. All the bodies are joined together, knitted together in love. That's a place where God can manifest his glory. Hallelujah. Rama Shamana Rakhabalaba Ribababa. Hallelujah. When we are scattered, we are no body. My hand is separated from me. That hand is not a part of my body. That's why doctors stitch my hand back to me so that I can have my hand. So every person, I request, please join your hands together. That is a symbol that we are one body under Christ. When we come in unitedly in one accord, there is power. When the church earnestly prayed for Peter, Peter was delivered. There were one body. There was no division. There was no separation. There was no he and he. There was only me and me, my brother. It is everything for my father, through my Jesus, me and my brother. If you cannot have that one accord, 
Don't expect anything from God. But if God comes, then what will God? You can't expect mighty power of God man who is in this place. If we can join in unity, if we can acknowledge that He is my brother, if we can acknowledge this is my sister, Jesus died for this brother. Jesus died for this sister. That make me honorable too. That make him a honorable person. Every person is honorable in this place. Every person is honorable in this place. Because why? Because Jesus prayed and died for that person. That make that person very honorable and very valuable. If we cannot acknowledge the truth, God is not going to hear our prayer. God wants to hear you, answer you. But you stand in one accord as a one body, as the organs and as how the organs of the body join together. There is power. Imagine my hand is away. I am powerless. Imagine my hand is away. I can do nothing. Imagine my eyes are away. I can see nothing. Imagine my ear is away. I can hear nothing. All these organs together make me a full person. So when we join together, we are one body under Jesus Christ. When God looks at you, He smiles at you. He laughs at you. He enjoys the unity of His children. There is nothing that can please God more than you unified in the love of God. They must say that the Lord is the Lord. They must say that the Lord is the Lord. They must say that the Lord is the Lord. If you have divisions, keep away. If you have disagreement, keep away. Because my brother is more precious than me. Because Jesus died for him. Jesus died for the least whom I think. The least person over here. I may think he's the least. But you know, Jesus died for that person. That makes him very valuable and very honorable and very precious. As we are joined together in hands as one body. We are going to pray. I ask Leelandi, please come and pray for our pastor right now. In one accord, we are going to hear. God is going to answer the prayer. God is going to deliver our pastor. God is going to open the bondages and he is going to liberate him. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, my Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Stodram, 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 Bakta Tangal Vishas and Wak Maratan Wine and Nalo and Snake Wine and Wise or the Stabidabe. They were made a person to those that in the Prabha, the Samet, the Tave, Anger, the Makala, Eric, and the Yangalka, where he meets out at the pathway at the Kadan Veruan, and when it's done, they summate the night and young and the other than the Studik in the Hallelujah. In the Hobby and Naki, there was some, there was a little young Sandoshi in the Hallelujah, Tave, Stodram, Stodram. They were made not this is an English for Articino, they would ask and marry an English for Articino, Polgatave, they were made past to burn the world and younger days. She passed to end young people, they might for Articino, Hallelujah, 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 Gartave, past and Engine under the real line, the Ashwatri light in the Mansilai, um, dehydration on the wound of fluid, a good thing, which I reckon. Hallelujah, Gartave, Stodrum, Stodrum, and they made the Magan Idik in the Stanet, Gartave, out of the Turkarangal Lake, young and eleven, with a bitch, young as a summer picky on a Gartave, Stodrum, Stodrum, and a Kiprim lover, with a Kiprenda in Gartave, Yahoo, and a Valangay, Niti, Rechich, Gartave, young Kutra, and a man, young Pratiki on a Hallelujah, Hallelujah, Gartave, Stodrum, Stodrum. Dasima, Ejaman, the Kailakim, Dasima, Ejaman, the theatre Kailakim, and the boy Kartave, Nangal, Nangal, the Uma, a hoving lake, Kartave, Nangal Katuli, where they are the Hallelujah Kartave, Stotter, out in the Kribble, we give all of my pa, they may, out at the Sunday, Jim Pratti, Chunikin, the Hallelujah, out in the Wadi, Turakan, the Uma, the Stotter, Stotter, Kartave, a three mega mang at Mangani, Midwich, Iroke thought a Saki thought a little bit into. Kartave, Sahai Kinaman, young Pratik in the Halevia, Krabadon and the Megartave, Stotram, and they may rain and engage Pratik in the Amagartave, Arugium, Bellum, Shaktim, 
ദൈവമേ ഈ പ്രശ്നങ്ങളെ നേരിടുന്നതിനുള്ളതായ കൃപയും കൊടുക്കണമേ എന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു അതുപോലെ തന്നെ കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളെയും കർത്താവേ ഞങ്ങൾ ഓർത്ത് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു അച്ഛനെയും കൊച്ചമ്മയും പ്രത്യേകമായ ഒരുത്തത്തിന്റെ സന്നദ്ധയിലേക്ക് തരുന്നു കർത്താവെ മാതാപിതാക്കൾക്ക് കർത്താവെ മകന്റെ സൗഖ്യം കണ്ട് ദൈവമേ അങ്ങെ മഹത്വപ്പെടുത്തുവാൻ ഇടയാക്കണമേ എന്ന് ഞങ്ങൾ പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഹാലേലിയ കർത്താവെ സ്തോത്രം സ്തോത്രം ദൈവമേ സഹോദരി കുടുംബത്തെ വിനിമൃത തന്നെ കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളെ എല്ലാവരെയും കർത്താവെ അവിടുത്തെ തൃക്കരങ്ങളിലേക്ക് സമർപ്പിക്കുന്നു വിലപ്പെടുത്തണമേ എന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കുന്നു ഹാലേലിയ കർത്താവെ കടന്നു വന്ന എല്ലാവർക്കുമായിട്ട് സ്തോത്രം പ്രാർത്ഥന കേട്ടിരിക്കുന്നു കൊണ്ട് സ്തോത്രം എല്ലാം മേശ്വര നാമത്തിൽ താഴ്മയായി അപേക്ഷിക്കുന്നു കേൾക്കുമാറാകണമേ Hallelujah. Let us sit in the presence of God. Praise God. As uh, the school is going to open tomorrow. Hallelujah. And some schools are already open. Any of the kids who are going to school tomorrow, please stand up in your places in a moment. Hallelujah. 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 School children. As the... Uh, Sharon. Hallelujah. So, so, as the school, new school year is coming, we ask for the lord's protection and provisions and guidance upon the children may the holy spirit of god guide the children and use them for his glory wherever they are so we are going to pray for them right now hallelujah yes yeah, so danny please come and pray for these kids as the new school year is standing new school year is stand, starting thank you lord we come to you with your precious children that you gave to each of these parents and we submit them into your hands lord lord your word says that we are on a perverse and crooked generation lord but you've given us the spirit that raised jesus christ from the dead lord so i plead your precious blood over each of these children lord i ask that you would mark them lord that you would protect them lord as they come and they go lord we ask lord that you would guard their hearts and their minds lord Lord that they would be a shining light for Jesus Lord wherever they are Lord. Lord I ask that they would know deep 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 down in their hearts Lord who Jesus is Lord in these days Lord in the midst of this generation Lord would you guard your children Lord Jesus. We plead your blood over them Lord. We ask that they would be a shining beacon of your light Lord to bring many back into your kingdom Lord in these days Lord. Lord we thank you Lord for those that graduated this year Lord. We pray that you bless them Lord as they go out into the world Lord as they do jobs Lord. Lord we pray that your provision Lord would be upon them Lord as they go to do the call that you've commissioned them to do Lord. Lord I ask Lord that they would set their eyes only on Jesus. Lord the author and finisher of their faith Lord that they would know who called them and who elected them. We thank you for what you're going to do through their lives, Lord. We pray for their parents, Lord. We pray for godly wisdom, Lord, to raise them in the fear of the Lord, Lord. We pray for their teachers, Lord, and administrators, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would guard their hearts and minds, Lord, that these children would be raised up in the fear of God, Lord, in these days, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Thank God. You can sit. I ask uh, Pastor Thomas Joel will come. he will help us to give the love gift to god praise god pastor hallelujah 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 at this time we are worshiping with our song our action our or the ability to give his glory to the almighty god we sang here a song and a, a god given a, a insight in my heart great is our god no other god equal to him the next word you are my lord what it means we are saying you are my lord then we submit completely so whatever we have that's given by almighty god so let let us give our uh, what we received from him in his hand we the love offering taken in, in your hand how much you are 
going to over now. Take your in the hand and I am going to pray for you. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we come to thy presence with heart of thanksgiving. Lord, your grace is sufficient for us. You are the one who brought us in this world through our parents. But eternal life received through Jesus Christ only. Lord, we give you all thanks and glory to your name. In our life, Lord, you've given so much. But Lord, we are giving back to you a little. Our love, showing that we are loving you. Lord, we pray that you bless this offering. Bless abundantly to extend your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, helping us to last week and months, years, when you look back, Lord, you are so only one who sustains us. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can come and finish. Praise the Lord. How many people are happy here? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God is a good God. He makes us happy. And He restores our souls, right? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for everyone who are here today. We are in the presence of the Almighty God. He wants to speak to us. He helped us to worship Him. God used the worship team. And we were able to pray for our pastor. And we are more needs to pray in the presence of God uh, because of our time limitations, limitations we cannot do everything uh, individually I greet all of you uh, on behalf of our pastor Nainan may God bless you all uh, I thank God for Vinu brother Vinu brother and family went for a vacation in India God has bring them safely back and uh, we are happy that we can worship again together with this family hallelujah Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. As a, we have a, something to hear from the word, we have until 9.30 time. I'm going to speak from the word of God. Hallelujah. For that I am based on the word of Romans chapter 8, verse 37. On the basis of this word, I'm going to speak what God has put in my heart to you. Let it be a blessing to us. Romans 8.37. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Hallelujah. This is a testimony of a person. This is not somebody who did not go through trials or temptations or problems. In fact, a person who undergone through the most problematic life. I don't think anybody <laughs> after Jesus Christ we all sometimes go through problems, some, sometimes because of our mis mistakes. Sometimes we don't use our common sense. Sometimes we do foolish things. Sometimes when we stand for the purpose and plans of God, also we go through problems. But this person who write this letter to us, it is Apostle Paul. He, not for himself, for the very cause of Jesus, for the very purposes of the kingdom of God alone, he undergone through such adverse situations in his life more than anybody we think or imagine. But this is a testimony of this person. I had to go through 
we know when you study the Bible, there are so many, so many things. He has affliction in the sea. He has affliction from the thieves. He has affliction from the church. He has afflictions from uh, false doctrinal preachers. He has, hallelujah, shipwrecks. She has, he has so much trouble. He has hunger. He has poverty. He has all these things. But see, the testimony of him, the final statement, this is as all these things I went through, but yet, in all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him who loved me. Hallelujah. This is our testimony of every person. Because uh, when I was small, I heard about a movie. I never seen that movie. There's a Malayalam, they say, Jai Kyanai Janichavan. Hallelujah. I never seen that. Maybe you, some of you saw that. I do not know. Hallelujah. I'm not uh, advertising a movie. But uh, I heard, when we go through, when we travel, we see, you know, the posts for the movie there. Uh, billboards saying this movie is released. I'm not uh, encouraging nobody to go to movie or, I'm not, that's not my subject. But that movie says, Jai Kyanai Janit Seven. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Maybe this is the testimony, that's Paul's testimony. He was called to be a winner. He was called to be victorious. He was called to be a conqueror. And it is not only about Paul. It is every children of God who are born again. God has made you born again to win. But you were a failure before you were born again. But once you are born again, you will never fail. 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 This is the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are going to ask, we are going to go through it. In what perspective he is saying it. When we see Acts chapter 8, 28 onwards, hallelujah, we are going to see certain things there, hallelujah. There is this, like this, 28 onwards we see, hallelujah. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. If you are a person who really love God, Nothing can work against you. Maybe you think something is working against you. God is going to turn it down in such a way that you will benefit out of that wrong also. Hallelujah. This is Paul's testimony also. You know, one time, I think in uh, Acts chapter 15, one time Paul was so persecuted, people came and stoned him. And he lost his life. He dead. The worst scenario of a person, right? He was dead. And they, what they do, they kicked his body out of the city by their feet. This is the most humiliating situation that can happen to a person, right? So, who is Paul? Paul is a person who genuinely loved God. He was called by the plans and purpose of God. So no defeat can come upon him. Even though situations come like it is a defeat. You know what, time, what happened at that time? In fact, God, Paul lost his life. But he was caught up into heaven. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul is writing, I know a person in Christ. 14 years, before 14 years, he was caught up into heaven. He was lifted to paradise and he was able to see mighty things and he was able to hear the voices. He was able to enjoy the presence of God. And he has written in the book of, of the Holy Bible for our edification. For you are edified, we are edified. Thousands and millions and millions of people are edified by the failure of Paul. But that failure, God turned into a victory for us. So we know there is a paradise. There are unknown things there. There are mysteries there. There are angels there. There is God. There is a throne. There is so many, so many things. It is a glorious, glorious presence. And he was able to explain and write those things. And he was able to give an insight in all of us. Shabala Rekhanaba. See, God, how we do? He do, unless Paul was not writing it, we have no clue. What is paradise? There is no mention, very rare friendship. But he have, we have a better, better understanding of what is paradise. And we have a longing, we have a better longing to be there. We have a better longing, oh, I also want that experience. We also have, you know, when something God do in someone's life, that will instill a fire in you, it will ignite an enthusiasm and a desire and an interest for knowing the truths in the deep. Hallelujah. So nothing and nothing and nothing can defeat you if you are a child of God. Hallelujah. Maybe the situation maybe seems like, like that. 
Will you be able to tell like that? Nothing can defeat me because I love God. I love God. Nothing and nothing and nothing can defeat me because I love God. Even though situations may look it is a failure, but God can turn it into a victory and I will be victorious because God has put me in a person. His name is Jesus. And he is the most victorious person. And he is the winner of the winners. And he is the conqueror of the conquerors. And I, because I am in him, because always we think we are in the Adam. If you are thinking you are in Adam, you are lost. If you are in the law, there are three systems of governments. There are three leaders God has appointed in this world. When we look at them, there are three systems we can see. First system is what? Adam, right? First system is Adam. Adam means now Eben, he has two children. God has given those two children to Eben. By trusting Eben and Sibi, that they will bring these children in the godly way, useful to God and man. That's the purpose. God entrusts this trust in Eben, and he trusts him. With that trust, he has given him two children. Maybe he'll give him more. I do not know. It's up to the plans of God. Hallelujah, please. But whatever it is, it is because God trusts you. How many of you have children? God has trusted you to take care of the children. God did not give, no matter anybody, God has given you children. God has, God trusted you to bring the children in the knowledge of God, to be useful for God, to be useful for humanity, so that you will be a blessing in the world. That is, it is, God has interested you. It is not, a, it is really God has interested you. God believe people more than us. I'm telling you, hallelujah. <laughs> I don't think how many people trust me, but God trusts me. I'm telling you, this is a living testimony. I'm telling you. Maybe you, if you look at you, I don't know, none of you may say, oh, I'm not trustworthy. But God is God trusting you. God is trusting all of us. Because God, God is more generous than we are. We are sometimes trying to limit God by thinking God is like us. No, no, we, God cannot be like us. And God, don't be like that also. You be what you are. God is so generous. He trusts you. Even when, Bible says, even when we are unfaithful, he is faithful to him. How can we do like that? We, do, we will be faithful to anybody who is unfaithful to us. Hallelujah. Will we be able to be faithful to anybody who is unfaithful to us? We will not do that. We will cut off that person and cut off. You are out. Hallelujah. But God is not like that. Even when we are unfaithful, God is faithful to us. That is the book of Thessalonians telling us, right? Hallelujah. So, there are three systems of government. Hallelujah. This, if I'm going to open each thing, it's time is going to run away. There are three systems. The so first father, Adam. Everyone, all the humanity was in Adam, right? From that leader. So, Adam was what? God see him as the leader of the humanity, right? Now, second leader who? From that Adamic leadership, God choose a, person, a group of people. That's called the Jewish people. And God governed them by his laws. Praise God. Hallelujah. God governed them by the laws. But the laws was, the law was a leader also. Because that system was a leadership God given. Because the system was like this. If you obey the system completely, you will be justified. But if you make any mistake in any point, you will be unjustified for everything. Hallelujah. So Bible very clearly says, and also it says like, if anybody who do not completely obey all the commandments of this law, they are cursed. So like that in a way, everybody who was under the law, they were cursed. And nobody could be justified through that law. And what is the, that is the, what God entrusted with the law? What was God was expecting? To protect all the people lead all the people to righteousness. All the people try to be righteous, but they are all failed. And another thing happened. One person who literally obeyed all the law, 100% from A to B. On eighth day, he was circumcised, and he do everything, and he do everything. And until the last breath of his life, he perfectly obeyed God, and he fulfilled the law. But what happened? The law, which was given which was supposed to give protection to the person who fully obey that law, 
the leaders or the cape or the people who are making or practicing that law, who? The religious leaders, right? The people like Jewish, uh, hallelujah, high priests and scribes and elders and all these things. They did not show any mercy to the person who followed everything perfectly. So it, it is a contradiction, right? It is supposed to be giving protection to the person who did everything perfect. So the Jewish law should have given the full protection to Jesus. Nobody else was qualified, but they at least should be given protection to Jesus who obeyed the law completely. But they, instead of giving protection, they killed him. So God take this leader out of the picture also. If you cannot, if you are, hallelujah, yeah, when God has given me a responsibility, if I am not worthy, I am not doing it the right way, hallelujah, I cannot take it for granted. God may take my authority and he may replace somebody else in that position. So that system, that leader, law was a leader. And God already knew through law, nobody is going to be justified. But this law is going to lead the people to another person called Jesus. In uh, Romans chapter 7, it says like that, as long as there is a wife is married to a husband, as long as the husband lives, she is under that husband. But if that husband is died, she is free from that husband and she can join into a new husband. Bible clearly says like that, the second the second leader, first leader who gave, God gave us, Adam, he failed. The second leader whom God gave is the law. He failed because he could not protect nobody. Not the people who do right or wrong. Nobody could protect. So God abolished that system. And so that everybody was given a freedom to choose or to marry another leader so that that Everyone from thereafter live in the abundance of him. In the provisions of him. I thank God Abigail is going to be baptized today. She's going to do the same thing today. Hallelujah. 10.30 after the church, we will be having baptism in our home. Everybody is invited. Please come, come and uh, join and pray for this child. Hallelujah. So what I mean to say is that what Abigail is doing today is... She is getting into a marriage covenant with Jesus. Last week we saw, we recently witnessed some marriages. We saw the marriage of uh, Job and Betsy, Sweda, Feba, so many marriages. We have seen like that. So until that moment, Sweda, Betsy, Feba, they were all under a leader or who was their father. Like Faber was under the leadership of Philip brother, Alleluia. Job was under his father. Oh, exactly like that. Or, or All these people, they were in a different authority under a different name, right? Different family. But when they married, they get into the inheritance of the new person. Even I'm talking about the females, right? Betsy, Faber, and all this. But the moment they are married, see, if everything Job has, it became a common property. It's a common thing for Betsy. Hallelujah. Like all these people. So exactly like that, we were in the world and we were born from human parents. We have all traditions, all cultures, so many things we have inheritance. But when I decide to get into a marriage covenant with my master, with my savior, with my Jesus, I am entering into not my provision, not my father's provision, not my grandfather's provision, but I am entering into the provision of my Jesus. He is the hero of all things. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 2, well, one verse, I think 2 says like this. God has made him, hallelujah, hero of all things. Amen. Hallelujah. Devam avane sagalatinum avagashya Hallelujah. God has made him. So when a person is entering into a baptism by which he is declaring, I am the bride of Christ. Hallelujah. So he is entering into the provision of that person. Hallelujah. That's why 
Paul is saying, I am more than conqueror in everything through him who loved me. Because of his love, he put me at covenant between me and him so that I am one with him and I am in him. Hallelujah, I am in him. This is the, the verse which we read. It is, a, it is a privilege and it is a testimony and it is a truth about a person who is in Christ Jesus. You may go through trials, temptations, problems, all those things, but in the midst of all, you will be more than conquerors. Hallelujah. So we are, uh, uh, Acts chapter 8, 28, we were uh, reading. There we read like this. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. For, who, for whom he did foreknow. Hallelujah. He also did predestinate to be confirmed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many things. So all the problems and trials and tribulations which happen in life, we have to understand in connection with this word. Whatever I go through, it is for making me, to making me more confirmed to the image of his son, Jesus. Maybe you go through abundance. Maybe you go through poverty. Maybe you go through sickness. Maybe you go through something. But when I go through that, hallelujah, Paul went through that. Paul, in fact, he has to die. But all these things work together. So he was turning to be like more like Christ every day. Every day, every day. So with this scripture as the foundation, we have to, Understand the problems and the trials and tribulations that can come in our life. But based on this verse, we have to connect it and we have to think about it. It says like this, hallelujah. Everything is hallelujah. God foreknew me. He predestined me. For what? God called me, he predestined me, he justified me, he sanctified me, and he is making me. All for the purpose of what? Only one purpose. He wants me to be like his son. So everything is working together. Those who love God, everything is working together for the plans of God. That is what? That is making me more like Jesus every day. With this perspective, when we look, nothing, nothing, nothing that come in your life. See, maybe I go through. Maybe somebody, uh, hallelujah, mistakenly fight me. Somebody slaughtered me. Somebody hit me. But that is making me more like Christ. One time a person hit me. Because I was preaching gospel, uh, a person came and hit me. I was knocked down. I lost consciousness. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. I had to go to hospital. So many th- uh, I'm not uh, explaining or elaborating something. I lost consciousness for some time, but somebody luckily, by the grace of God, somebody came and see me. Hallelujah. Because he was his, the evil spirit in him irritated him and told him to hit me. But I have no grudge against that person because I have no fight against flesh and blood. But I have fight against that evil spirit. I, that demonic spirit I have fight with. But that person is innocent. He is a poor man. So I give him mercy and I forgive him and forget everything. This is what. So everything that happened in my life, so maybe I won't be doing like that before. But now God, I had to go through that. I lost conscious. Hallelujah. It's happened about two, three years before. But I lost conscious. But God was looking what in me. God was giving me that opportunity to show the love of God to that person so that I can be more like his son, Jesus. Hallelujah. With this perspective, you see the trials and tribulations, the problems of your life. You will be elevated 10 feet immediately. (laughs) Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You will be immediately climbing many ladder steps immediately. But with this perspective, we are going to see the things. Hallelujah. So we are going to we see like that. With this perspective, we see things like that. Bible also clearly gives us that we are conquerors and victorious persons, right? First John 4:4 4, 4 says like this. Hallelujah. First John 4:4 4, 4 says like this. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You are children of God 
you have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than the one who is in, in this world. Hallelujah. We can overcome the world. How many of you know there is a system of the world? Matthew chapter 16, 25, please display. There Jesus said, if you gain your life, you will lose it. If you lose your life, you will gain it. What is this talking about? I have only one life. If I lose that life, what life I am going to gain? If I gain what life, what life I lose? But I, these two lives it's talking about, but I have only one life, right? We all have only one life, right? But it is talking about two lives. For whoever desires to save his life, lose it. But who, whoever desires to oh, lose his life, will make another. What is this life is all about? See, the thing is, there are two ways of life in the world. One is a victorious way of life. One is a failed way of life. But the things we think it is a victorious way of, way of life may be a failed life. Because there are two systems. One is a God kind of life. That's called high life. That is called victorious life. There is another life is called world kind of life. That is a failed life. That is a failed life. So if I, that is a worldly life, the system under the world. If I choose to leave the system of the world, I will never be able to enjoy the system of God. If I, if I choose to live by the system of God, I will fail to, you, fail to win the system of the world. If these two lives I cannot conquer together. Because the Bible is talking about people who are genuine, who are willing to obey the word of God, who are willing to be obedient to people. Not talking to anybody who are, it is open to every person who is willing to obey the word of God. Bible will not make any application or any good things to anybody unless we are willing to obey the word of God. This is for obedient people, this is for true people, this is for humble people, this is for people who are honest about the dealings with God. Hallelujah. So these two lives are there. One life is a high life, one life is a low life. But Pete, Paul is mentioning, talk to us, talking us is this. Hallelujah. Because I am in that high life, I will never fail. I will have only victory and victory and victory and victory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Another scripture, 1 John 5, 4, it says like that. Hallelujah. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has become, that has Overcome the world, our faith. Amen. So we overcome the world, how? Not by muscle power, not by gun power, not by nuclear, not by any power. We overcome the world by faith. Hallelujah. Faith. Because the one who promised is faithful. Because the one who is promised is faithful. By our faith, we will overcome the world. Hallelujah. So we have victory. We are called to be victorious. But one more thing, before I conclude this, I wanted to say something. But can I fail? What do you think? You are a, Christ, you are a person in Christ Jesus. You are called, you are redeemed by the blood, you are made righteous by God. You are the apple of his eyes. Jesus Christ, the hope of glory, is living in you. The one who is in the world is lesser than the one who is in you, Christ Jesus. All these things are true. But same time, can you fail? Hallelujah. Can you fail? Hallelujah. When we fail, we are not failing. A child of God, when he fails, he is defeating God. If I being, I am preaching to you about Jesus and his mercies and his victory, and if I failed, of course I failed, but I am failing my God also. This is a very, 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 very serious thing. You are doing anything which is not reflecting Christ, that has consequences not on you only, but it will have consequences about the glory. This glory will be unchanged, but because God wanted me to achieve certain things. And he's all liberally given everything for me. 
and he expects me to walk in obedience with him. But when I, when I stand in rebellion against him, when I, dis, when I do not cooperate with him, when I go against him, God cannot accomplish the plans and purpose which he planned in my life, by which I am failing and by which I am also giving a note to the plans of God about me, by which I am failing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a very, 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 very serious thing. I just wanted to show two scriptures about it because the time is running out. I'm just uh, going very fast. Hallelujah. We go to Malachi, in the Old Testament, Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. It says like this. Will a man can rob God? In Malayalam it says, Manishana Devate Tolpika Mo. Hallelujah. See? Amen. Yeah, it is about finances. Financial area only is talking that place. But not only in finances. The Bible says, you are making me fail. Ningal Devate Tolpikunu. Devate Argal Tolpikam, but anybody can fail God? But you can fail God. I can fail God. You all can. When I preach something and I don't act like that, I am failing God. I am preaching like that. Jesus is like, I'm on the conqueror, but I fail before the devil. I am defeating God. I am defeating God. Man, it's very, very clear. So it's only taking about one thing, like about the offering and the money which God. We, as his chosen people, his bride, we are supposed to give complete focus for our groom and be prepared for his ways. When we fail in that things, the God who has called you to do that plans and purpose, you're failing that God. Hallelujah. One more scripture I quickly read and complete. Praise God. Hallelujah. That is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul is talking about a group of believers who was in Corinth. They are very anointed. They have the Holy Spirit. They have the different gifts of manifestation of the great works of God. They are, hallelujah, mighty peoples. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's still here. For you are still carnal. For where there is an envy, there's a strife and a division among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Mere men were like the worldly men. That means, in another words, you are, are you not failing God? They are all born again people. They are powerful people. But in their heart, there is about outside, they are very close, oh, very good, oh, praise the Lord, Harald, Shuddha, Baha. But say, internally, an opening. Katha varanyu, hale parishan maria peti katha varanyu, the whitewashed sakalpur, sakalpur, white heart sakalpurs, right? Inside, outside it is so painted nice, but inside it is bones and smelling bad and wrong thing. Let us not be like that. God has called us to be winners. Victorious and conquerors. Hallelujah. My, let us make a decision before our God. God, you have called me. You have paid a big price for me. The call upon my life is not small. It is very mighty and wide, wonderful and so great and awesome. And you have paid for all that. And by receiving you as my Savior and entering into the waters and baptism, I have entered into an agreement, an everlasting, hallelujah, un changing agreement to wed you as my bridegroom and I am your bride, you are my bridegroom and by doing that I am entering, leaving my all the earthly bag and I am entering into your rest and I am entering into your provisions I am entering into the new life which my bridegroom offer me, I am entering into the 
resources of heaven. I'm not going to enter or trust in any of my past or future, past or my previous, hallelujah, inheritance or resources. I'm cutting off everything and I am giving you a very dedicated life to live forward from this moment onwards to be obedient to you. You are my as a master. You are my savior. You are my king. You are my, you are my bridegroom. And I will, as long as I do, I will never fail and never fail and never fail. When I will never fail, you will never fail also. Also, if I fail, I am making you fail. I am not going to make you fail, my God. You are called me to be a victorious person. So by failing myself, I will not make you a failure. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Let us pray based on this word. Let us commit our life to the Lord. There are two ways of life. One is a God kind of life. That's called the high life and the low life. Hallelujah. God called us to win. And we are more than conquerors because we are in the person called Christ. He is a victorious person. He never fails. He defeated everything. And he has given that victory to us. But it is my choice to have that victory or not. We are deciding, Lord, to live in that victory. We are deciding, Lord, to live in that victory, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this time, Lord. Hallelujah. Dennis, can you come and pray, please, and conclude? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Master Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Dear God, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time which you've given us to be in your presence, Father. Thank you for the message which you have shared to us, Lord, that though we did not have the ability to fulfill all the commandments and all the promises in your law, Father, you sent your Son, and through him you have fulfilled all of it for us, Father. And today you have called us to carry your works in our lives, Father, and your, your success, your victories in our life, Father. We thank you, Lord, Father, that we are victorious because of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, that we are more than conquerors, Father, through him who loved us, Father. And we pray that in this continuing days, Lord, that we would, we would live that victory in every area of our lives, Lord. We surrender everything into your hands, Father. We thank you for the message, Lord. And I pray that your hands will be with each and every one of us as we go forward, Father. I pray that you would keep us safe, Lord. Cover us with your blood, Father. And I, pray, and I thank you, Lord, that your promise does say that you are a wall of fire around us, Father. So every circumstances that we face, whether good or bad, Father, whether it's a valley or a mountain, Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are still in the midst of us, Father. And because you are in our midst, Father, you make it more than enough for us to be conquerors in all those situations, Lord. We thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. And all the people of God say, Amen. Hallelujah. 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 May the God Almighty be with you all. Amen. Thank you for your participation. God be with you all. Amen. Amen.